Okay, in the wise words of uh, the always great Matthew McConaughey, all right, all right, all right. So uh, everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, so you're about to watch uh, two dorks with glasses talk about uh, role-playing <laughs> games, tabletop role-playing games at that, not even the computer ones. So we, I might lose a few. Like I might have, if, if one person was like, you oh, know, I'm going to watch this talk show, they might be like, he talks about MMA sometimes. That's kind of cool. And then we're going to be talking about rolling dice and uh, character <laughs> sheets and uh, and uh, controversies that would only be controversial to major geeks. So, uh, <laughs> you know, just, just making sure that the show, uh, you know, uh, rises to the... No, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> jokes aside, Kelvin, Kelvin Green is um, a, a um, writer uh, for uh, tabletop role-playing games. And you've worked for, I mean, I, I guess you're you're most known in the industry for working for the publisher Lamentations of the Flame Princess. Yeah. And um, yeah, so, uh, you know, all the self-deprecating jokes about her hobbies, uh, uh, hobby aside, uh, you're actually, you know, you're, you're making quite a name for yourself in the industry, at least as far as the, uh, what's called the old school renaissance goes, which kind of mm -hmm. tries to uh um, take inspiration from the old school um systems of the past you know from 70s 80s um and yeah you do stuff that's that's quite original uh and that's gotten like the attention of, of people and uh kelvin um i mean i want to start by asking a few questions from a blogger called the angry piper because he's a fan of yours and i i told him like look i'm gonna have kelvin on my show and are there any questions that that you want me to ask him? So, now I'm okay. doing this on my phone. I'm going to try to go get my screenshot. I hope I don't mess up the recording. Let's see. Okay, can you still hear me? Yep. Okay. Can you still hear me? I can. Yeah. And you still see me? Uh, I can't see you. You've frozen, but I can still hear you. Okay. Well, that that'll do. Okay. <laughs> so the angry piper is asking uh what do you use for layout hmm good question um it has changed over the years um uh usually there is someone else who does most of the layout um and currently i think it's um it's glenn seal who does the uh layout for lamentations um but i do tend to work quite visually so when i'm writing i do i do tend to sort of imagine a layout in my head which almost never actually makes it to the page because james and other people have trained layout people who put it together um who have better ideas than i do but um yeah i do tend to think you know i want a i want a picture on this side and i want the text on that side and i want them to interact in a certain way so i keep that in mind so yeah i mean i don't use anything for, for layout apart from my mind um but uh it, it is one of the things i've always wanted to learn but i've, I've never got around to doing it myself um the first thing I did for Lamentations, uh, Forgive Us, the first book, um, I did. It was kind of in inspired by the the movie The Thing, I believe, right? Yes, yeah, and it was it was sort of sort of the the thing um, shoved into a sort of sixteen thirty setting, um, and that one. It was the first one I I did. I really had no idea what I was doing, and I, I did actually lay that out uh, on paper. Um, I drew mock-up um, pages um, to send to James to say, "Look, this is how I want it to look." And you know, I actually drew that by hand and put the text on by hand, all in. Um, I think it was in some kind of Photoshop or something uh, back then. Um, so. Yeah, I, I I don't do the layout myself, but that's how I do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're using, and by the way, when when uh, Kelvin mentions James, he's talking about James Raji, the fourth, who yes. I've had on my show in a previous episode. So if you, if anyone likes this chat, you can look up a past episode with the, the actual publisher of Lamentations of the Flame Princess. Um, so that's the James Kelvin's referring mm -hmm. to. Um, 
and uh yeah so so i guess that's one advantage if if you're not self-publishing you you send that to to james raji and you're the fourth mm -hmm. and uh <laughs> and you know that i guess that's you you write the stuff and then he takes care of everything else yeah so, yeah I mean, you do the art as well which we'll come to but you because you're not uh, oh my apologies i messed up at the beginning of the introduction because i said you're a writer but you're also the artist of your of your uh, books mm. so that's a very important aspect of the fact that it's kind of like this package that you deliver all all together um so that was my mistake you know like uh, for, Sorry, for uh, it, it, it's i was gonna say it's late but you're you're actually talking to me at 4 a.m so <laughs> it would be ridiculous for me to complain uh, <laughs> so okay let's move on to the the other question from the angry piper because he's mm -hmm. uh, like i said he's actually a fan of yours he likes your adventures and uh, uh angry piper um if anyone googles him he has a blog about geek stuff you know like role-playing games miniatures and all that so let's move on to the other question that he sent for you uh, let's see Okay, uh, do you do uh, the map making? Do you do them or is that someone else? Uh, the maps I have always done myself, yeah. Um, uh, it just seemed, at the beginning, again, I, I really didn't know what I was doing. So it was a case of, well, I, I, I know how to, what I, I know what I want in the map, so I'll just draw the map. It just, I, it did not occur to me at that time that, I could give a hand-drawn map to someone else and they could do it properly and put it in the book. I just thought, oh, I'll do it myself. Um, and so that that's how it, how it started. Um, and again, I was sort of, I, I was just doing it how I wanted to do it, not how anyone had done game maps before. Um, so I wasn't going by a, a standard style or anything like that. Um, and so I was just drawing the map, and that's how my map looked. So I had this sort of certain style, which was my own, but it wasn't sort of designed that way. It's just like this is the map I want in the book. I'll put it in, and uh, and it yeah, it just didn't occur to me that most other people don't do that. They they you know they 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 sketch out a map, they send it to the 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 artist or the map maker, and then they put a proper one in the book. But I I just did it. Um, so again, the first time it was they were all hand drawn. They're all on on bits of paper. They're all penciled and then inked, and um, and then were scanned in. Uh, now I tend to do it all uh, digitally, um, uh, just because it's it's a bit quicker, um, yeah, but <laughs> but not as not as much quicker as you would have thought, because um, the the style I do them, it tends to be quite detailed. You know, I, I draw the contents of the rooms, I draw the flooring and stuff that you don't need, but it's just how I've done it. And so it, it still takes a while, but there are things that are easier, like adding the labels or if you make an error, it's quite easy to fix. But yeah, yeah, I still draw them, draw them by hand. Um, but just digitally now rather than on bits and of you, you, so what program do you use for for uh drawing the maps uh i used to use um a program i think they've changed the name of it now it used to be called gimp and it was like a free version of photoshop um i think the name has changed now um maybe for the best yeah yeah it's 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 that it stood for I'm thinking of Pulp Fiction when I hear Gimp. So. Yes, I think that's why they've changed it. Uh, originally, it was because it was uh, an, a free open source program, okay. and I think it was funny that it was called Gimp, but I think they may have changed it because there are some connotations to the that word. It, it <laughs> <stood> <laughs> <for> <laughs> um, so now I use something called uh, Krita or Krita. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, and it, it's it's a similar thing. It's a uh, it's sort of a free version of Photoshop, effectively for yeah. for drawing. Okay, um, that's cool. So, but you know, you were telling me like you do things with the maps. Even now, you add things that are normally not necessary. Mm. But I guess. Um, for people who might not be familiar with uh, the limitations of Flame Princess uh, publisher, publishing line, I don't know, company, um, 
it's it's certainly a company known for a strong uh, artistic style mm. uh, i would say that um probably the whole art punk movement started i mean I, you know uh, now i'm talking about the publishing line and i'm not going to dwell too much on that because it we're here to talk about your stuff mostly but um just to give an example like the the whole art punk could arguably have started with uh vornheim which was published by mm -hmm. lamentations of flame princess yeah so not not a book by kelvin green but i mean it's so uh, i think it's almost one of those things where um even, even actually the grand house uh ver edition the book like you had art in again not by kelvin green we're talking about the core books by james raji and uh, various amount of artists but um you had like art that went through pages but at some point you realize that it's kind of like changing over time the art mm -hmm. is kind of like evolving and at the end there's like a if you will a conclusion to the to that mm -hmm. evolution of the art so they, there, there was always like a strong artistic style in the books um not just in its shock value of the core books like the gorish the gore imagery uh very like music metal i don't know which metals like I, I told James Raji, I don't know which of the medals, but there's some medals in there inspired. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, so, you know, when you tell me like, oh, you know, I was doing it in, in my own way, not necessarily the way people do it. I'm like, yeah, that, that pretty much fits the, the line, doesn't it? Mm, absolutely. Yeah, it's um, I, I, I think what you say is, yeah, it's very true. It, there, there was no such thing as an art punk movement uh when james started but i think very much it sort of kicked off from there yeah because you you could definitely see a line from lamentations of the flame princess through to the art punk movement and to things like mork borg where it's all about the set the layout and the the visuals and yeah. you can draw a direct line there um so 100%. yeah it's 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 very much uh i think you pick up a Lamentations book, whoever it's by, and you'll know you'll get a certain thing uh, and that, that it'll be a certain visual layout kind of thing. It won't look the same as anyone else's book from Lamentations. Or even between its own books. you know. Like, mm, yeah, every book will be different. Even mine looks slightly different from each other. Um, but you know there's a certain thing you're going to be getting from them, um, which you don't get in other in other uh, publishers you do get a little bit now because of that explosion of art punk but yeah. um yeah it, it's still very very distinctive yeah yeah and and it's certainly in a um i'm not really gonna pull any punches here and kelvin you, you can feel free to disagree with me like so whatever i say and for the love of everything like if at some point i say something and kelvin doesn't have time to just go i disagree with this statement please don't think that whatever i said kelvin agrees because he didn't take like five minutes to go against <laughs> me or whatever just by you know just having your back for the internet but um i think the tabletop rpg hobby is certainly a hobby that um appeals to people who are very 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 sensitive and sheltered sometimes mm -hmm. not everyone but it's you know like and uh, and again you know, you don't even need to nod man stay safe just uh, i'm doing the work here you don't need to nod <laughs> <laughs> so i'm gonna give an example here it's just, it's just comical it's actually like people got so funny it was just funny it was just funny because it wasn't intentional but even if it had been intentional it's in good fun if it had been so there's one year and because of stranger things and all that like james raji had um not by you but another artist he had mm -hmm. like commissioned uh, I don't know if you would use commission hired or uh, I don't know what the term would be for commission, right? Even yeah, if it's commission, yeah. yeah. A piece of art which was like one of the characters, maybe the flame princess herself or one of the other adventurers, like kind of grinning as kids in bikes were impaled, like Vlad mm -hmm. the Impaler style. So, like, kind of like a joke about the trope, how because of Stranger Things it had become so popular, or maybe it was a little bit before, I don't know, like there was a zeitgeist where the 80s mm -hmm. were coming back in, you know in style and the kids in bikes is a trope where like kids in bikes go on adventures and fight a supernatural or whatever it may be um and um you know it, it would get kind of interesting at some point if they do a movie where they don't go against the supernatural but like against the uh, the neighborhood pervert or something that might be <laughs> thing, but maybe maybe too close to maybe too real <laughs> maybe too mm -hmm. close to reality they're afraid to be escapism but jokes aside like they have the kids and bikes and so it was basically like all oh, limitations is impaling the because they're the edgy one they're impaling the kids and bikes 
Mm -hmm. And it was for an awards uh, show uh, and or convention. And it mm -hmm. just so happened at that moment that a game about kids and bikes had won an award. And people thought that James was going after that company. Yeah. And then two things happened. James was, first of all, like explaining, no, it's a coincidence because it's in Zagai's right now. I didn't think like, I didn't know there was a game, kids and bikes or whatever it, the name was. And even less that it would win, you know? And mm -hmm. so everyone's like, oh, he's going, it's so, it's so bad, it's so bad. But then I was also thinking like, what if he had done that? It's like, mm -hmm. it's it's different publishing houses, competitors. Uh, to me, it's in good fun. To me, it's just funny. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I don't even know who would get offended at that, but this is the hobby we're in where, where like, that is offensive. And as, yeah. as someone who's also an MMA fan, that is hilarious to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because now these people could could stand like one day of being an MMA fan, I think, with champions like Sean Strickland say, I mean, I'm not expecting you to know who that is, but he says the most inflammatory things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you know um so, so it's, it's just like it, it was just funny it was like so this mm -hmm. is the, the, the so basically it's like this this publishing games publisher who does things that like any heavy metal record like it's nothing yeah the mm -hmm. movie industry is nothing sports is nothing like it's but in the tabletop industry it's like this whole this very controversial entity which is hilarious it's just yeah. funny it, it it is it's it's so strange in in almost any other industry or environment <laughs> it, it, it would be nothing no absolutely nothing um and but for some reason it's it's just it's the most monstrous extreme thing ever and i know sometimes james does deliberately go after um after the controversy he does he he, he tries to push yeah. buttons but even when he does it's still anywhere else it would be fine you know, but not only that if if people know that that's what he's doing they mm. should have a thicker skin about it too yeah like, yeah it's it's odd it's it's sort of like you know what you're getting yeah why are you surprised and shocked it, it, it's like <laughs> look it, 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 it it's it's it, odd it, I, I've never understood it. I, I certainly didn't understand the kids on pikes thing. It was so strange that no, if that he had done that on purpose, that would have been hilarious to me. Mm. I don't see the issue. issue. If if I had a well, I mean, I am actually working on something, but I'm not certainly not going to invite you to to plug my shit. So I'm I'm not gonna. <laughs> but just as a side note, I am working on something, but I have been for years. Um, so I'm a, a huge procrastinator, and uh, I, I had the art commission for years and years. You know. And um, and I've actually, um, you know, so, so whatever for for an RPG at some point. If if James Raji were to like, or any other publisher were to kind of like take a jab at me through art, you know, through mm. whatever it is I'm doing. Again, I'm whatever it is I'm doing. Like, oh, you look, I'm gonna I'm gonna go after you through a piece of art. I, I will. I, I would be like, can I have a copy? Can you sign it for me? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I, I think I would be flattered if someone did it yes. to me. If so, yeah. If so, if someone wrote or drew something and, uh, and 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 like was doing it to ridicule me or to poke fun at me or to go like, oh well, this was stupid. This thing you did. I'd be like, okay, great. I I want this in my library so I can put it next to the thing that you're you're making fun of. You know, it's as as long as you're not trying to hurt someone. Yeah I, yeah, I don't see the problem. It's all like, fun. Yeah, like hurting someone, and, and that involves, like, for example, I've had twice on the show, um, you know, because we're on good terms. So at some point, I, I, I like I need to, like, I was like, hey, can you come back again, uh, James Desboro? And mm. whatever you might think of the man, like, I'm not, and you know, I don't agree with him on, any, on everything, but uh, the way he's been dehumanized, like, and this is kind of mm. crazy. It's an, uh, the tabletop RPG hobby. It's a hobby where if people disagree with you it's like they they think they they are entitled to do the do and say the most heinous heinous uh, help me out here anglophone uh, guess. i think it's heinous yeah heinous yeah heinous, the most yeah. heinous shit to like and james has been open on being suicidal suicidal and someone sent him razor blades through mail they they got his real life address and and it's like and, and the reasons why is because he wrote an article and look i know it's a touchy subject but mm. 
um i know i don't i don't know what youtube will allow to say no but like let's say he wrote an article about how in fiction i'm, I'm just gonna say it this way to avoid any words that youtube might not like um how in fiction like even the most horrible things are okay to write to use in fiction now mm. not glorifying the actual thing but the title he he did make a controversial inflammatory title for the article he named it in defense of this really bad mm. thing and it's basically yes the title was meant to shock but then when you read the articles about artistic um uh, freedom about like mm. look if some for if a writer if a game wants if uh, whatever if a movie wants to address certain topics and look you like and then and then people are like well why would you want to use it in game well how could this be a shock value and let me tell you something i don't know like the movie deliverance mm. it hinges on something very <laughs> very unpleasant mm. but yeah. there's no movie without it is there so yeah, it, it would be a very different film yeah it wouldn't yeah, be as so, remembered yeah so basically anyway so so we're gonna go, come back to you, Calvin, because you're my guest, and I invited you here. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I went on a run, but okay. um, it, it, basically, I, I guess I was trying to give context for someone who might not be like a, in the hobby, like of, of the Polish you work for you, know? and um, and basically he wrote like people should be allowed to write very bad things without it being uh, seen as a representation of the artist uh, on a personal level of his morality or uh, you know like just. And then, um, since then, he's been like uh, considered like like this mm. this monster. Um, which again, you, if if you disagree with him, and it, you can even say like he is a jerk, like uh, okay, fine, uh, you mm. you have your opinion, but it's the way that they've gone after him that they've made up things about it. And it's just like crazy to me. How do you send someone who's suicidal razor blades through a mail because you yeah. think, oh, I don't like this thing he wrote? Mm. It's 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 such an odd such an odd uh, situation I, I i don't know why it it's it is the way it is in in the community i don't know why it gets so sensitive and so reactionary and so like oh you've done a bad thing that we disagree with so blacklisted gone and yeah. it's, it's it's so odd and it's like and it goes against are... the real left by the way i, I don't want to get too political <laughs> It. I, I'll get political. <laughs> uh, what's kind of funny is that it, this often comes. I mean, the right has its own kind of censorship, but uh, on different subject matters and different um, things. Although you know, if 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 the cycle turns around, I'm sure they'll they'll you know, I'm sure mm. if it came back the other way, they they would also like you know. I, I think humans are humans, and most people are 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 people. You know, like they mm. they if they see something they don't like, they're gonna try to get rid of it. But um, on principle, the left would, would be artistic expression, not being censored. Like, uh, you know, when you think of the, the 90s, the, the left was badass back then. Mm. It was like it, the left was the provocateur, you know, like, mm -hmm. and then I don't know what the fuck happened, but here we are. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not implying that the right is any better. I, I'm not, <laughs> they're, they're yeah, not. It's, it's just because their, their eyes are not on, on um, I guess they're actually they're, they're just as bad. It's just like in in this hobby, this hobby is mostly, I guess, uh, there, there's a large portion. So this is why I'm addressing. But I certainly want to mention both sides are guilty of different kinds of censorships for sure. But yeah, it 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 do, it's very odd. It doesn't seem to be. It doesn't seem to be along standard political lines. You know, back in the '80s, there was the big you know satanic panic of. Yeah. You know the 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 religious right trying to crack down on the hobby because of demons and witchcraft and things Which like James that. James Raji wishes we're still in those days when he makes his books. <laughs> exactly, because he'd be making millions of these people. But um, <laughs> but that's not the case now. It's not those people. Um, I, I, you know, they've moved on to other things, I'm sure. But uh, it it does seem to be now there's an element of of the the oh as you say the, uh, there's an element of the progressive left and I, you know i consider myself progressive left but there's an element of this progressive left which is cracking down in the same way that the hard right did like 30 40 years ago and yeah it's very, except i consider it regressive you know like I, I think they think themselves progressive but they don't understand what progressive actually means and mm. um 
it's just about copy pasting certain things but then when you look at the actions the actions are not those of a virtuous person and mm. um you just copy paste a few things and that's it but yeah um, it's 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 very odd it's i've been lucky that even though i've worked with lamentations um for years uh i've 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 never really been touched by any of the stuff that happens um i'm probably the least controversial person who's who's worked there um you know uh, not nothing of mine has been considered banned other than you know the people who will not touch their stuff at all yeah um or other than bad association so in other words you none of yeah. none, nothing you did has been um yeah yeah it, but exactly uh, except by association you work for <laughs> james raji therefore i'm blocking you on on twitter x yeah exactly that nothing i've done has been picked up as as controversial or dangerous or anything like that so i haven't been touched by anything directly but i have seen people around me or people i know who've been touched by it and and it's just it's baffling mm -hmm. it's it's just crazy well i mean not to name any names but certainly even within that publishing line there's people they they kind of like just started arguing with people non-stop and that just fuels the fire Mm -hmm. Whereas I look at your your online accounts and you're like, oh, there's a meat, but not meat, meat pie or pie. I don't know. There's a pie festival coming. Yes. Yeah. It's actually, your your social media output. It's like mm -hmm. I'm excited about the, this pie. I'm gonna eat later <laughs> at the festival. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah. well, <laughs> <laughs> that's not the other fire, thing. I'm yeah. 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 Is the well, mince pies every sure, Christmas? But... Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's one of the things I I wanted to do. Um, uh like a couple of years ago or probably more than that maybe three four five years ago james came to me and said um i need i need someone to just produce lots of content for me to keep um the company going so yeah. um so he came to me and said would you be able to help me with that and you know i said yes and one of the things i wanted to do was to sort of be the good guy so you know uh someone who doesn't cause trouble doesn't have anything um not that the other people are causing trouble but they've got you know no I, I get what you mean like uh, yeah if, if you i think what you're saying is and correct me if i'm wrong because you're the output guy but mm. if i can put it like this because um limitations is kind of notorious for taking long times between uh, mm. uh like long stretches of time where there's nothing and this is for various reasons and then there's like mm. a bunch of books at the same time and thankfully it, it appeals to the collector kind of clientele who is all about that mm. but um there's also something to be said about the business uh, doing better if there was a bit more of an output and i think this mm. is where you are known as a very productive uh, mm. uh, uh creator and because you're both writer and artist i was looking for the word uh, creator i think is a good word mm. um so, so so i guess it makes sense you 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 thought okay if, if i'm going to be the guy doing a lot of output it's better i guess for a company if if my name is uh, safe <laughs> yes. yeah 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 is, is that is that what you yeah basically and you know it, it it wasn't it wasn't like deliberate you know I, i'm not being any different to how i am but I just thought, you know, I, I'm, I'm just going to be me and I'm just going to be a decent person and I'm going to show that, you know, this company has got a reputation for sort of good or bad, you know, or deserved or not, it's got this reputation. And I wanted to show that, you know, not everyone there is a bad guy, not that the people who were there are I get bad. It, I get it, I get it, I get it. But, you know, just to show, look, maybe you're wrong about this company, you know, maybe not everyone working at this company is some kind of crazy right-wing nazi child murderer you know what they, think, <laughs> they yeah. have heard this on the internet but they're not you know uh, so that's one of the things i wanted to do the most important thing is the work but i wanted to show you know like maybe you're wrong about your preconceptions about who is working for these companies you know um and you know as, as it turns out there are companies where there are actual people who've done criminal acts or uh, who have um, done other 
unsavory things and they are not lamentations of the flame princess how come? but it's so weird because they said all the right thing on social media i don't understand it exactly yeah. they said exactly it's, what everyone else was saying so it's not like they copy paste the same thing yeah but that's the thing it, right that, that's the, i think that's the thing that people are missing is that let's say that you and i um are talking and we agree we agree we agree we agree and boom we disagree on something mm. And then I'm like, oh, okay, we we'll disagree on this, and um, and may maybe it's something that that's very important to you, but uh, and you know, from there you can decide if you want to continue hanging out with me or not. But if mm. you start dehumanizing me over it, mm. after everything we agreed with, this is the one thing. Uh, um, it's a bit of a silly attitude because in in reality, if if we meet that moment where we don't agree, mm. then you know that everything else I said before was true. Mm. Because they didn't lie about this. Whereas someone who agrees with you on everything, and if you search within deep down, there's things that you're saying that maybe if you felt more free, you wouldn't necessarily say exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. Or you just, like, my point is if you agree with everyone around you about everything, 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 it's either the biggest coincidence in the whole world regarding you, it's impossible for a whole group to. Or uh, mm. you have a lot of bullshitters around you. You have liars around you, mm. and you made it yeah. easy for them to be liars. Yeah, and you made it easy for them to. So it's like, for example, it's an example I give all the time. If I see a dude, and I have seen, like, um, a dude with a T-shirt that says feminist, and it's all or nothing with this guy. It's like either he is like it's all or nothing. Either he is legit, super into uh, women's rights, or he's a complete opposite. Mm -hmm. He's casting his net. It's it's like it's all or nothing. So yeah, you do if if you expect someone to be a good person because they copy pasted everything you wanted to hear, and you know like it it's and also like maybe someone will say things you don't like, but if push come to let's say but if push comes to shove, if you could jump on the street, they'd be the kind of person to come help you. Whereas maybe mm. someone else like says everything you want to hear, but then if you get jumped, they're like looking the other way, you know. So yeah. It, this is just a stupid behavior. It's just stupid behavior. You know, to think, oh, you know, like it, it's it's mm. it's it's yeah, it's it's strange. It's it's sort of people. Uh, there there seems to be a sort of a lack of um, a lack of nuance or examination of what's in front of you. There seems to be just a sort of an acceptance of. Uh, of like a, a very simplistic uh, approach to the world of like that this is how things are blah 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 and not not examining things and not going oh actually things are more complicated than they seem yeah. and it's okay for them to be complicated it's also okay to not really understand what's going on because it's complicated but please don't go behind a wall and then attack everyone else outside because that doesn't help yeah. you know it's Let's have a bit more understanding. Let's have a bit more uh, acceptance and an attempt to sort of engage with people. Some people you cannot engage with. Some people, you know, if you've got, if you're dealing with a bunch of Nazis, they're Nazis, leave them, get push them out of your life. They're Nazis. You can't, yeah, well, yeah. you know, <laughs> but most people... You you can you can discuss and engage if you disagree fine disagree on things, but as long as no one's getting hurt and surely you can just engage with people. But I don't know why people get like this. But mm. I mean, you don't even have to. Like my point was also like, look, you, you don't <laughs> like someone, you don't like someone. It's cool. <clears throat> yeah. But, but then when they, when you like they they go after people in ways that are. <clears throat> um, obsessive and then like you're you're, you're basically hanging out uh, you're, you're you're spending more time thinking and and and, and um even interacting yeah. maybe on social media with this person you dislike well what, what does it bring of value to your life you're not fighting evil you're wasting time and you're making yourself kind of a sicker person uh, mm -hmm. psychologically at least and um yeah so many people to, seem yeah. to spend so much time and effort arguing about other people yeah and so I, if you don't agree and you don't like what they're doing, say that, move on. Like, and I practice this on social media, like sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll mention something, you know, like, okay, this is maybe an opinion I have. 
but mm-hmm. I don't uh, eternally engage in it in, anymore. And and certainly, mm-hmm. um, and certainly, like if if I I, I kind of say what I had to say, but then if someone goes and says something like really shitty, or like I just kind of like, eh. or or if or if I see, or even if I see like you know what this is impossible to. In a limited post, it's impossible to get into the nuance of things. I'm just, I just let it be. Mm. I just move on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and yeah, I'm exactly. like, oh, this, this actually, like, yeah, this. And yeah. then I realize sometimes I come, I, I don't even comment on sometimes I just go, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who benefits? You know, the, the only person you're going to benefit by engaging with that kind of, of thing is, as you say, these groups who are so insular that all they do is go around in circles saying the same thing to sort of keep themselves happy in some way yeah. there's a sort of destructive happiness because they're not producing or creating or doing anything positive they're just always arguing about the same things and sort of slapping each other on the back about how good they are for disliking the same thing and so yeah it, it doesn't help well, anyone. I, I have I have this theory because um I, I think what happens is um it's a way for them to feel heroic, like oh I went after mm. evil. Yeah sort of having to put themselves in any sort of danger or conflict or true effort. Mm. Yeah, it could be. And they yeah. get that feeling, you know. I have uh, I've been in actual like like I said, I mentioned this many times and uh, at this point, someone someone's gonna try to think. Um, I, I, I just want to bring it up, but it's just a very good example. I have been in actual fights in my life to protect other people. I, I just mm. so happen to be there, and you're like, okay. And the feeling you get afterwards, despite all the ugliness, then you, it's ugly, but then you feel really good about yourself because as human beings, we need to have value in society. You're mm-hmm. you're a create, you, you know, you're an artist. You create things. You you understand that like you you put value into the world. Mm. people tell you i really enjoy this you know or maybe someone else then like it depends but like some people will go and for angry piper i still have some questions of this that i have to go through for example and and you know okay this is my contribution to society and so for mm. me like um maybe that night that i i was in the right place at the right time and and i thankfully didn't get shanked or anything like that like i helped someone and mm. i'm like oh I, I, it was really ugly it was not fun but i feel very good about myself at the same time because i helped someone mm. i helped another human being in a time of need and maybe put a wrong right you know like and then yeah. you feel good about yourself but i think it's it's an extremely good feeling so if someone finds a way to manufacture that feeling without putting themselves in any sort of danger or putting themselves in any sort of true discomfort mm they are going to chase it and they're going to find that evil you know Mm -hmm. yeah no i think you could be right yeah it is a it's sort of like a safe kind of crusade um because yeah you're not actually engaging you're just throwing some words on the internet and you could feel good about having you know slayed the dragon as it were to you know you've defeated that bad guy um but yeah, I don't. I, I, but, it doesn't but, uh, feel positive. It occur, even someone who has like views that I would find despicable, it wouldn't occur to me to to get them fired from their job or or, or like do things mm. like that because I'm like, oh, well, maybe he has a family to feed, and, and yeah, I don't know what the, his kids' views will be someday either. Like you know, like why would I do that to kids? I can't. And um, yeah, if it's a if, even if it's a single person, like look. We're supposed to live in a in free speech. We're supposed to live in democracy. We're supposed to, and and I think it's one of those things where, where do you become the bad guy? Even if someone mm. says something you don't like, even if some someone says something you find despicable, like where's the, where's the line where you become the bad guy? Where's the line where, mm. um, there's still laws, right? We are, you know, so uh, and I know the laws are not perfect, but what I mean to say is like if someone did something truly truly awful, you can actually tell. The police or someone you, yeah. know, you can oh the, you know if someone goes like i'm gonna do something really bad uh, you know mm. you tell the authorities so it's so how bad is it really that someone said something you didn't like you know like yeah you know, I, I see stuff i don't like all the time either because i feel um betrayed by other progressives or so-called mm. progressive or of course uh, conservative views that are like super conservative you know, like I, I, I will not like them, but I, I don't need to go after people. Like we're, we're supposed to be able to share ideas. We're supposed to be able to say them safely. 
Yeah, so, yeah. And my father lived through uh, Franco Spain. So I have very strong views on, of, mm. on freedom. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you, you've got actual sort of indirect experience of a really bad situation that most of us in this sort of modern world we don't we we live comfortable lives no that's we literally don't... like my neighbor says something i didn't like and you know mm -hmm. and before and of course before someone says well that's because it's the far right well i mean oh, look at how the left can go too far as well you know? mm. yeah absolutely um, I, yeah i do you know yeah. i certainly lean left but i try to stay centered <laughs> you yeah. know, I never go too far yeah um, it's just you know don't hurt people if you go through your life doing stuff do what you like in your life as long as you're not hurting someone you're fine in my book you know that's it you know it's if you if you hold some horrible views keep them to yourself don't hurt people don't act on those views and we can at least you know get on i may or, disagree or, or thanks to free speech do share those views so we all know who you are yeah yeah so we can stay away from you yeah, yeah. exactly you know, just don't hurt people. Um, yeah. Like, I don't know. For, uh, I, I don't know. Like, I don't want to give examples, but like, really, like, uh, for, for me to to want to go like, this person shouldn't have a job. This person shouldn't, they doesn't deserve to live. Like, the things they, mm. they, they would have to have done are actually already illegal. Yeah. So I don't need to, you know what I mean? Like, so. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's like, okay, if that, you yeah. need to go beyond, uh, like, be if, if the law doesn't cover whatever the person did, are you really in the right to to go uh, in the right as in in the moral right, not political mm. right, to, to go after them? You know, like it's anyway. We, we got sidetracked big time. Right? That's my. Fault. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, wanting to give some context about like the hobby and, and the publisher. Uh, we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, say so that's a lot of context. <laughs> yeah, that's too much context. Let's go back to you. I still have questions from Yangi Piper. Okay. I blame it on fatigue. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm going to freeze again. Let's see. I wonder what my freeze phase looks like right now. <laughs> it looks good. Oh, does it? Okay. I don't look like one, one eye bigger than the other, like mid blink. No, no, it's good. Both eyes open, a little smile. Yeah. It's all good. Okay, the, the mouth is not like just half open in a weird way. No, no. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to read. Uh, okay. So, layout, he said, I can't say enough good things about Midwinter. That's one of the books you, you, you made. Mm -hmm. And I also love Forgive Us. I guess the question would be which one of his RPG releases, that, okay, that's, that's the last part. Which one of his RPG releases does he like best? Is it a Lamentations of the Flame Princess product or something else? uh and, oh he also asked how often do you get to play so th those were the remaining questions so no more no more freeze face from me okay Ooh. so which one is my favorite uh i was thinking about this the other day um and does that happen often you think you're you're in your own you're in your house and like which one of my products is my favorite <laughs> yes yeah it's every week i think hmm, which one maybe is you know the question was coming because you, you were going to be on my show and you're yeah like, i thought i i did think it might be coming up um okay. yeah interesting one um, hey, thank you angry piper for sticking to asking questions to the guest and whereas i go on <laughs> rants and you're like strung along with me yeah, I should go on Angry Piper's show next time. <laughs> well, he doesn't have a show, so this is what you know. Get a show, yeah. Angry Piper. I keep inviting him. I keep inviting him to um, to the talk show. He's like, no, I don't have anything to talk about. Like, okay, fine. Like, I, I'm like, <laughs> you don't need to go on camera. Like, I'll be the only one on camera. You can just talk. You know? Yeah, throwing some questions from the side. Um, my favorite one, I, I, I was thinking about this because I think it has changed. Because um, I think... My favorite one for a long time was um, Green Messiah was the one that was Dude, my own. I, I have a PDF favorite. of that one that James sent me uh, before our uh, chat. Which, uh, I don't think we got around to talking about it, but I love the, Sorry, go ahead. But I just want to say the concept is, is bunkers. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't even remember how I came up with that one. But uh, yeah, you that watch was Man of Steel at some point. Watch Man of Steel or Superman 78. Probably. Yeah, it it, it it was an odd one. I I, I can't remember. Then you're like, what if Superman's poison ivy? 
<laughs> Sorry, no. I, I, th I think, I don't think James asked for it. I think it just occurred to me that one. And I just thought, what if he had, what, what if, what if you did an adventure about an elf, uh, like a wood elf, but what would a, a really weird, if you took the wood elf to its natural sort of conclusion of in, in touch with nature, that it would be some sort of nature spirit. And that would sort of be like Swamp Thing. But how would Swamp Thing get to, work, to Earth in the 1600s? Maybe he came from space, like Superman. Okay, so maybe, and then it all sort of spun together into this weird, just mess of, of <laughs> an adventure. It's technically about a wood elf, but you wouldn't know that from looking at it, because uh, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it's Superman who is a wood elf, but also a, a nature spirit, and is it? It's yeah, it was a very very odd adventure. I don't know exactly how that came out of my brain, but that was my favorite for a long time. Um, but I think my current favorite is probably strict time records must be kept. Um, which... Oh, that was by you. I remember the title. I, I, oh my God. That I love that. that okay. That is a quote by uh, Gary Gygax, who's the mm. creator of, of Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, back then it was like, you, you know, and uh, and James Raji very much adheres to that philosophy too. If you read the core books of Lamentations mm -hmm. of Saint Princess, he's very much like, when the characters go into a dungeon, you must keep track of how much time they spend there. The torches, like, are the mm -hmm. torches still good? Uh, how many do they have? Like, so you keep track of ration. This is an essential part of the game. And James even made a, a um, the God that crawls, an adventure which is about uh, keeping mm -hmm. track of time and resources. So the fact that you have a book that. <laughs> And that was by you. I, did, I didn't know that it was by you. That is, it, there's a book title that's a quote. Mm -hmm. You could say this almost like anal, <laughs> yeah. you know, like <laughs> sounding at least. I, I yeah. agree with the philosophy, but it's certainly anal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of those. Um, I, I think it sort of characterizes my approach to all this is that um, I, 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 I just, I look for the fun in it. Um, I look for the things to to focus on and then twist it out and say like like and, and examine the absurdity of it and so that's what it came from I, there's that line in the dungeon master's guide from gygax and says uh, um your campaign is meaningless unless strict time records are kept and it's all in capitals which i agree i actually yeah. remember that i actually agree uh, with yeah that. absolutely you know, other there's... players would be like the narrative uh, takes breath. and i'm like the narrative is what the dice say it is <laughs> yeah it's 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 absolutely it's part of the old school play it, yeah. you know you it's it's it, it, you can you could discard it because it, it's not much, it's too much timekeeping it's too much record keeping but that's kind of the point of old school play is to you know um so i can see why it's in there but it just struck me as funny that it's in capital letters as well, like, it, 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 as, it, as a sentence it's hilarious and the thing is like yeah. even even someone like me who who agrees with it like how can i put this you know there's people who quote gygax as as the this is the the, the 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 sacred text, you know. And mm. whereas I, if I were to argue for that, I certainly would not quote that part because it's kind of yeah. like it's too nerdy, it's too embarrassing, it's too much, you know. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> the, the way it sounds is like the worst kind of anal retentive, you know. It, but I agree with it. But it's with it's it. comic book guy from The Simpsons. You can just hear it in his voice. You know, it's true. The, and, and I want to be clear. And I want to be clear, like I am not I'm not this thing Gygax at all. Like mm, I agree with it. Good. It's just the way it came up and but I also love it. I kind of love yeah. how it sounds. Oh yeah, the, you know, it wouldn't be the title of the book if if I didn't engage with it. And you know, the book itself, um, it's all about keeping strict time records. So it's like I'm not just making fun of it. No, I, I am using it. You know, the whole adventure is about that line of the TMG. You know, it's there's a there's a two-page checklist on how to check off the time i'm helping you keep your strict time records um, well, do you have okay do you have okay did you consider that the that, that like role-playing game characters never go to to the toilet to the bathroom the toilet in some settings but did you take that into mm -hmm. account in that book absolutely because you did it, oh my god finally someone did 
there you go. There is a t- there is a time um, there is a time limit in that adventure, and you know everything you do takes time. So, you know, if your characters are going to be taking toilet breaks, you need to tick that off your time limit because. Oh, but, but did you directly address it in a book? I did not. No, there isn't an actual thing of you taking uh, going to the toilet takes this much time. But because it uh, should be, it should be. You know, <laughs> you know they're like, oh, we're staying in the dungeon and blah blah blah. And then mm. what's kind of funny is that if you include in, a, I, I have to include in my next campaign because what's funny is that what the players, what's going to happen with the players is they're going to go prison style mm-hmm. because they're going to be like they're in the dungeon. I was like, you know what? You you've been traveling for like two days. Mm-hmm. Um, you haven't stopped for a putty break. Do a constitution roll. Like you really have to go. If you don't do it now, you're gonna sell your breeches, and then everyone's gonna be able to smell you. <laughs> and all the creatures are gonna be like, I, you know, I sniff too. Yeah. And then, Absolutely. like, and then what happens is, like, the characters in, you know, would be like, well, do I go to a private corner by myself? And the whole group would say, no, you can't go by yourself. Are you crazy? So he's gonna <laughs> take a dump in front of everyone. <laughs> yep. Yep. Absolutely. Because players are paranoid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you get to have I'm gonna include it because I want to see players arguing and then mm. go like, no, no, you're gonna take your shit in front of us. <laughs> it's, it's, By the way, it's again, fun. we're talking about an imaginary scenario. The players themselves don't do that. It's uh, for those who mm. are not familiar with the hobby. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't <laughs> take the hobby that seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Strict toilet records must be kept. Yeah, <laughs> there's a sequel. There's a sequel. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that one has that, that one's sort of become my favorite. Um, yeah, partly because I think other people really like it, um, and sort of when you're when you're writing these things, when you're creating them, you sort of get a bit too close to them and you sort of fall out of love with them. You love the original idea. You work on it, you write it, and then you sort of fall out of love with it, and then it goes out into the world. Um, but then people really sort of liked that one in a different way to my others, and they sort of sort of enjoyed how gamey it was and how, how in, well, not intricate, but how it sort of really sort of embraced how the game worked. Um, and we're having fun with it, and uh, that's sort of reminded me about how much I love the original idea. So at the moment, I think that one is probably my favorite one. Uh, but it will change. Next week, it'll be something else. But By the way, uh, I just want to say real quick, Kelvin, if if I suddenly disappear, my cell phone's almost out of battery, don't, like, I'll, I'll come back real quick if, if it dies on us. Okay. But I certainly have to check that, that one out. I certainly have mm. to check that one out. Uh, but and wouldn't you say that people have come up with, like, solutions to timekeeping which end up being way more complicated than just checking every so often checking a box okay they use this ration they use this many mm-hmm. other rules like they just come up with rules that end up being more complicated in my opinion they're just checking something yeah yeah it's absolutely <laughs> because people so i think i understand it because i think there is a there is fun in creating little subsystems and and get engaging and, and creating things and i think some people get a bit carried away with it and um and that's fine because again they're not hurting anyone they're having fun yeah but, this is not a moral stand it's, yeah but when you get to the table and you go oh the, this this thing's got 16 pages of rules on how to open a door you know you think oh, okay you've gone too far there that's you know too much um uh as an example and i'm gonna i'm gonna be controversial now oh um uh, Call of Cthulhu uh, is one of my favorite games. I love Call of Cthulhu. I've loved it since I, I was a teenager. Um, the current edition, the seventh edition, I hate it. I absolutely hate it because they've taken a game which was, the rules were like 20 pages long. The rule book was 300 pages long, but there was 20 pages of rules and then 280 pages of stuff. And it was great. But the new one, has got like 16 pages on how to do a car chase. And you think, is that really what we want? Uh, someone wanted it because they wrote that. You know, they wrote those rules and they play tested them and they had fun with them. It's not what I want. It's 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 too much stuff. You know, you you've thought too much about it for my tastes. Um, if it were me, 
it would be you know an opposed an opposed role one person rolls their drive roll the other person rolls their drive roll whoever rolls best wins the car chase i don't need you know 16 pages of car chase in there um uh, so that's my bit of controversial game gossip there um but again you know if you're having fun creating those rules and playing with those rules some most i think call of cthulhu players are happy with it so you know that's that's great um but yeah simpler is better for me um i think i've lost you i will um we can edit this bit out probably um. <laughs> I could sing and dance. I'm not much of a dancer. I'm not a singer really either. Um. Hard to give answers to an interview when your interviewer has gone. But I'm sure he is locating a charging cable. And we'll be back with us very soon. He's hoping. Welcome to the Kelvin Green Show, where I interview myself about stuff. Um, what shall I ask myself? I don't know. I know all the answers to the things already, so there's no point asking myself the questions. Or is there? Is my philosophy degree at work? Is there a point in asking yourself the questions? Um, good question. Not gonna sing. Dancing is best for the sanity of everyone. Let's not do that. There he is. Hey. Oh. Oh, I can actually hear you much better. Okay. Than I did before. Interesting. Maybe it was my phone. Anyway. <laughs> oh, that was pre-recording. So yeah, thank you for having stuck to the studio. Like I said, uh, it was the battery, or maybe what you were saying was so controversial about Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> that it looked like rage quit the conversation right there. Absolutely, the Call of Cthulhu controversy has uh, caused the breakdown of the interview. There you go. Um, let me just, uh, okay, perfect. So, um, yeah, sorry. So you were saying lots of pages and, and it became like you, you felt like it went into too many rules at that point. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, and I, you know, that's my personal t taste. Call of Cthulhu seventh edition is very popular. People love it. It's yeah. It's just, you don't need 16 pages of car chases in my books. <laughs> um, so that's, uh, 
Yeah. Although what I meant was more like something like uh, people keeping track of of if, uh, like arrows um, towards mm. the by rolling a die, and then if it's this, then you move to a smaller die. And at the end, I'm like, it's it's a cool rule, but it, yeah. I don't think it's any less bookkeeping, really. No, no, and uh, uh, yeah, and as I said earlier, it's sort of um, it, it it's a fun rule. I quite like it, but. It's not what you want in an old school game. So if if you're specifically trying to play an old school type of game, then stuff like keeping track of arrows and provisions and how much drinking water you've got, all that kind of stuff is part of the old school game. If you want to play something that's like old school but that doesn't have that, fine. But mm -hmm. if you, if what you want to play is proper old school then yeah, yeah it's those are parts of it you know yeah. but i think you know the the hobby has always been about i like this game but i don't like a b and c i'll change a b and c or i've got a different game you know which is the, cool. you know the, the split of D and D and rune quest is that you know it's yeah. people playing D and D and going oh i don't like the combat system and there are no skills oh now i've got rune quest you know so it's it's always been the way so uh yeah, yeah. And, and certainly once you realize that like uh, uh you know basic role playing the system from chaosium like cough 2 and all those and gerbs are basically the same system once you realize and they <clears throat> and they come off the statistic um range of the stats from D, &D like from mm -hmm. 18 and then you're like, oh, it's it's all derived from D and D because well, not all, not everything these days. But what I mean is like you look at like GURPS and you wouldn't think D and D. You look at basic mm -hmm. role and you wouldn't think D and D. But then you look at the ranges of the stats, and then mm -hmm. you go like, oh, it's the roll under is this, and then you go GURPS is rolling under mm -hmm. from one to uh, twenty. No, no, to eighteen. It's on three D yeah. six. So it's like, oh, okay. And then I saw like at some point I saw like a conversion on a, a GURPS uh, magazine. About converting a cough to to groups, and it's basically like you just switch the, you just go with the percentages, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they just oh this skill and stuff that one. I'm like oh it's all the same system actually, and yeah. It's just yeah. Someone, someone just hacked it, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a it's all system hacks, you know. Even the things which are really different, and you think oh you know the the more sort of the recent indie games which are so far removed, you know, at a basic level, that's still still uh, you know that's still related to D because you're still sitting around a table with your friends telling a story with rules you know even at that basic level you're playing the same game you know um yeah i mean it, it's it's the same it's the same hobby i would say maybe, maybe yeah. not the same game but it's a, mm. I, I get what you're saying it's it's you're yeah. still going from what they created and uh which is kind of like formalizing uh something we did as kids without any rules yeah other, exactly. other than other than the honor system you're like yeah yeah like, would you, i dodged it no you wouldn't have dodged that and then you argue about oh we still argue even with the rules so there you go yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and the angry piper was asking if you still find time to play uh yes yeah um i've got um a local group that uh, i play with um you know that obviously um the covid uh, you know pandemic uh, hit that but you know we then we discovered online gaming and so we managed to keep together through that um and uh i play test the adventures as well so um i usually play test them with my group and then i try to play test with other people as well just because you know i've played with my group for years so they know how i run adventures and i know how they play adventures so the play testing is not as useful as it can be with strangers um so yeah i do i i do still play um i i, I think it's important for someone who's writing adventures to play i don't think it's essential um i think you could still design uh, a very good adventure um or a game without play testing it or without playing with people i think it definitely helps um but yes yeah, so i don't think it's essential but uh, as long as you think it through properly but yes i do play um i i can't imagine not playing uh it, it it's i just love 
and playing games. So I, I, I couldn't imagine not doing it. Um, I do need to play more. Um, I've got uh, I've got more time on my hands these days than I did sort of like ten years ago or so. So I I, I should make make more use of it and play more. Yeah, yeah, that, that's <clears throat> that's great. Like, <clears throat> I think I think it, it, maybe someone doesn't need to to currently play, but I think they they need uh, to have played at least. You know, like mm, I think yeah. you know, no one can. It, it's one of those things like you can't just pick the books and be like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna. Take a guess, and uh, oh. well, maybe someone can out there. Who knows? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but it, it's more difficult. Yeah, the 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 more play experience you've got, the better, the easier it is to write adventures. Maybe not the better. You know, maybe the adventures won't be better, but it'll be easier to write them if you uh, if you know how to play and you do play. Um, uh, unless you fall prey to overthinking, I guess. Yeah, once mm. you know, I but. Um, but what would you say? Okay, so this is something. Um, what would you say is the? Hmm, um, well, I guess it's a bit of a typical question, but what would be your your advice for writing adventures for role playing games? Ooh, okay. Um... Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, we're 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 past the one. I mean, maybe not when I trim it because I disappeared for a while and i'm sure we have a footage of you kind of waiting so i'm gonna trim that obviously i'm not gonna keep it in or maybe i will if it's funny i don't know what did you do did you do anything funny during that time but um what we're at the one hour mark uh for people watching and past the one hour mark for us um so i gotta hit you with those classic ones you know before before i let you go so um yeah, yeah your, your your advice on on writing adventures okay well uh, I wouldn't necessarily follow my advice because uh, I, I have never won an award, but people do like my stuff, so we'll see. Uh, <laughs> um, I think you've got to have a re you've got to have a good central idea, um, and it doesn't have to be a big idea that covers the whole thing. But as long as there's one good, you can have a basic ten room dungeon as long as there's a good idea in there somewhere, something fun and different that people go, oh, that's cool. Uh, you know, the whole dungeon doesn't have to be, you know, inside the veins of a giant or something like that, but just something in there that's different, you know, a, a magic item or a character or a room or a monster, something that's a bit fun. Uh, and that gives you the energy to write about it. Because um, that's all of mine have been, oh, I've got this central idea, and then the rest of it's spun out from that. Um so I think you need that. You need a good central idea. Uh, for me, you've got to have things for the players to do. So things to play with, things to prod and poke and touch and fiddle with. So again, I'm starting, have... I'm starting to sound uh, <laughs> quite frisky there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't write those books. Um, so yeah, no, we can this guest James this borough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you want um again you could have a basic 10 room dungeon, but you know, make make five of those rooms interesting with something to play with. You know, uh, uh it could be a trap or it could be a puzzle or it could be a monster that works in a slightly different way than just hitting it. Um riddles, you know, things for your players to do and engage with, uh, because it's a game. Um, uh, and games are toys and people like playing with toys. And so, uh, you know, as a kid and still am, you can't see it up there, but, uh, Transformers fan. I was a huge Transformers fan as a kid. There's a Transformer up there on that shelf. Um, and that's all about play. That's all about, I've got a toy here. I'm going to play with it and it turns into a different toy. And it's so simple and so clever and, and, They've spun forty years of toys out I, of that. I can see it from the camera installed in your house, but not from the <laughs> one you're using. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he's a white transformer against the white walls. He, he's there, but you can't see him. Um, Camouflage. <laughs> and okay, what he, in disguise? This one turns into a wall. Yeah, he truly <laughs> is in a robot in disguise. This one, um, and I think that's what you want in adventures. You want things to play with. You want things that yeah. Uh, is better than just rolling a dice to get past. You want players to engage with it, and yeah. it doesn't have to be super clever. 
but just something for them to sit around That's with fun. and and have fun with and argue with each other about how to solve and and just get engaged with you know so that they have fun i think uh, that makes sense that makes sense because when you think about it when you play the games it's not like players expect every five minutes to have a twist they mm. just they'll remember like if you play for four hours they'll talk talk for weeks about that one 15 minute moment where like oh remember mm. when that thing went completely crazy either because of the dice or turn of events or an idea someone had or yes uh something in the adventure or the game master mm -hmm. had with it just because when they sit down most people know okay well, we're gonna spend some time looking for traps and spend some time fighting monsters fighting mm -hmm. adversaries you know like so these are things that they expect that are not like uh, groundbreaking you mm -hmm. like yeah. so i think it's it's a very good point you make um and, and then another good point you make is like make sure it's something they can play with and not and it's not mm -hmm. just like oh this is some really cool information for my world and in building the setting because mm -hmm. they can't Unless they can interact with it, yeah. But, but a lot of people, a lot of times, people think like when they're creating stuff like, "Oh, this is really cool." Yeah, it would be really cool for a book, mm -hmm. to read, but not to you know, it's something that you want them to play with. So that's extremely good advice, I would say. And mm -hmm. and, and it's yeah, that's that's simple. It's simple to to up, to apply right away. You say it, you it's understandable, and I think it's easy to apply. So anyone. Out there wanting to write their adventures like no matter what game system you use that's excellent advice i would say thank you yeah absolutely it's just have something to play with because it is a game it is a toy you know we're we're, we're people playing with toys here so let's yeah. let's put toys for people to play with let, let's yeah. be honest let's be honest about what we're doing yeah exactly <laughs> exactly um and i've played in so many um uh adventures and campaigns over the years where it's like going to room one kill some things pick up some treasure go into room two kill some things pick up some treasure or you know find a clue go to the next place find a clue and it's like you at a certain point you realize that it doesn't what you're doing you're not you're not actually playing you're not engaging you're 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 a piece in a machine yeah which is and the the design of the machine is just to get to the end and it's like that's not fun you know, I I much rather play in something where there are ten rooms in this dungeon. We only got to room two, but we spent like half an hour in room two playing with this water clock with spikes on it, and it was doing this and that, and we pushed this, and then the wizard exploded, and it was great fun. We didn't see the other eight rooms, but yeah. we had fun with this toy that we were playing with. And, and I think that's better, cool. yeah. And then um, uh, game masters can get lost. Oh, they only did this much of the room, like this is not a job where you have to reach a stat like if players are having fun in this one moment that's perfect that's and then you didn't you don't need to do as much prep next time that's perfect you know yeah <laughs> absolutely uh i ran many years ago i ran a uh a call of cthulhu campaign and the players um they missed the whole second half they completely missed it um and they completed it early effectively um, but they did it through cleverness. They did it through things uh, which uh, I didn't expect and which the writers of the adventure didn't expect, but they completed it early. And your, your, temp your temptation, especially when you're first starting out playing these games and you don't know what you're doing, and you know, you, is to try and force them to see the big climax, the big finale. And it was. It was really interesting. You went to this alien world and you engage with all these alien uh, people on this strange dreamlike planet but they never got there because they solved the issue early so they never went there you could have forced them to do that but what they did was fun you know they solved the problem early they they hypnotized this guy who they found on the street who just happened to know everything that they needed to know so they managed to circumvent that and on one grounds that's a complete failure you know we missed half the campaign we missed all these big set pieces but it was great fun they enjoyed themselves they got this thrill that they managed to beat the adventure in a way that was unexpected um and i had fun because i was surprised that they'd done this um so it it was a success yeah, but that's the fun. That's the fun of being a game master, and that's something a lot of mm. game masters don't get. Is the fun is to be surprised. Otherwise, what's in like 
no one should be a game master because they want to tell this story that they have in mind. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Do, what I like to do as a game master is is pretty much like I just like to put challenges. I don't know what they're gonna do. Mm -hmm. Like if I if I make like this corridor and there's like it's it's like I don't know like this something I did one time. It's it's like this um, prison and you have cells on each side, you know. And then, like once they they reach the middle, like click a little tile, and they start closing in. And then inside, it turns out in the darkness, we're hiding ghouls, and they're like trying to reach out as they're closer. Mm -hmm. They have to run the corridor, and but you know, maybe they do something else. I don't know. I don't know what they'll do. Yeah, maybe that's where they die. That's fine. You know, like uh, and it, so the thing is that, um, or at some point, like uh, in a dungeon, like really like swampy, gross water. And uh, you know that there's like again ghouls, like but mermaid ghouls in there. <laughs> so it's like, and and then we go through like the swimming and 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 uh, the, like the rules for not drowning and you know. It's, but I, I I don't know. Maybe they completely avoid it. I I don't care. I don't care how they're mm -hmm. gonna deal with it. You know. And then of course, like you get a wound in that water, you're gonna you might get infected. And I'm gonna roll randomly to see what you catch. I don't know what you're gonna mm -hmm. catch. You know, like so it, it's <laughs> you know. So uh, maybe I overuse goals now that I'm having this conversation. But um, <laughs> I just like the idea that they're just gonna they're just gonna paralyze you. It's just such a shitty move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 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 a classic. Yeah, it's like, you're gonna oh. get eaten and you can't move. That's kind of horrifying, you know. Like yes, you're gonna be floating in water. You can't move, and things are gonna be eating you're you. You're running as, as you're eaten, and you can't swim out because you're paralyzed. See, that's mm -hmm. a perfect. It's horrible. Yeah. If you get out, you might get infected and die anyway. And yeah. <laughs> so, but but yeah. I kind of like ghouls because the way I play them, like people are so shocked. Because normally, like, well, game masters, like, you're paralyzed. This ghoul will move on to attack someone else while you're. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, the other ghouls are attacking other people. This ghoul has what it wants. It's going to start eating you as yeah, you're paralyzed. Right. <laughs> What's the point of paralyzing you if he's going to let you unfreeze? No, he's going to mm. eat you now. It's going to start eating your face. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the challenge. You know, that, that, that's, that's the toy. You know, here's a monster. It yeah. touches you. You've got a chance of being paralyzed. You know, so yeah. again, you know, that's 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 your challenge. How are you going to solve that? How are you going to engage with that? Um, yeah, it's better than just a straight fight. Walk into a room, hit, hit, hit. It's like, oh, okay. It's a tactical challenge here. Uh, ambushes are great. Ambushes are mm. great. You know, like uh, enemies should do ambushes, not just the players. And uh, and if your players are not doing ambushes, they're doing something wrong as a game master, or they're really dense. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, th I think those are my big, bigger, big bits of advice. Have a good, really good idea, um, or it, and don't sweat too much about it being a good idea. If it's a fun idea for you use that i mean don't don't think is this a good idea because there's no no judgment of what's good i mean what's if, good if is... you think it would be fun odds are some other people think it'll be fun absolutely yeah if you think it's fun that will encourage you to write around it and engage with the fun um you know don't think too much about making it good because then you overthink it and you you kill all the fun you know yeah, um, I mean, you know look at for example like lots of projects where someone thought oh this is what i would like like became like big hits such as the role-playing game fatal that was such a big hit you know <laughs> yeah the, the, i've got many for anyone... on the shelf here. <laughs> whoa, 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 wait you have a copy of it no no i don't no, okay, no i've yeah. never i've never seen a copy of fatal me I neither <laughs> if anyone wants to Google that, do do so at your own risk. We're, we're yeah. like, being sarcastic, to be clear, as being sarcastic. <laughs> if you Google that, that's at your own risk. I'm not responsible for what you're going to read. Yes, do not Google it at work. <laughs> no, do not Google it at work or at all. But if you do, don't blame me. <laughs> Googling fatal is like Googling two girls, one cup. It's like Googling lemon party, okay? And mm. so you, that's the equivalent for the tabletop RPG industry. Yeah, do not do it. Yeah, do it's not what a lot of people claim that Lamentations is. Mm. <laughs> I know, I know, it's mad. It's, right? it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like it, you know, that meme, it's the same, they're the same picture. <laughs> Someone should do yeah. it. like Fatal Lamentations, like same picture. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing. Yeah, I know, it's mad. I, I, <laughs> I see people saying, you know, oh no, they do this, that, and the other thing. It's like, no, look, I wrote an adventure about a vegetable Superman. 
That's nothing like anything. I mean, you right. say Vegetable Superman, it sounds like he was supposed to do much kryptonite and turn to a vegetable. Yes, well, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. It's like, you know, it's, it's not all the same stuff. You know, have a look. If you don't like it, fine, but have a look. Wait, um, now, I'm over th now I'm thinking, well, Vegetable Superman, like he's still indestructible. What do you do with Vegetable Superman? Yes, you can't make soup out of him. Yeah, no, no, but it means like you still got this indestructible buddy that can't move anymore. What do you do with it? There has to be a use for it, right? <laughs> it's indestructible, it is. Um, Man. so yeah, have a good idea, a, a central fun idea, and have lots of things to play with, um, and uh, interact with. Uh, I think those are my two main things for uh for writing an adventure um everything else is extra on there you know um play it um and uh and yeah i think i think that's it really uh, everything else is is sort of extra is gravy on top of that have a good idea and have lots of things to play with um don't sweat too much about it being perfectly written um because that's you know just and just get it out there so people can have fun with it if you're publishing it make sure it's not full of awful errors but don't worry too much about spelling and layout and things like that because people people will comment on it but if the adventure's good and it works then that's all you need don't worry too much about making it professional yeah. because uh, how, however and you know that i'm sort of going against lamentations here because lamentations is all about slick products you know oh, yeah. these are really nice products but if it's just text and some pictures that is fine but that's how that as a side note though that's how like uh that's for us doing the very first uh printing mm, it's absolutely there, there was art for sure but it was like um some of it was lit literally like a square grid with james like having just like drawn lines on it for the maps and mm. so there, there, there was art don't get me wrong there was art mm. but it, it's not like it was like the high production value at all like he would staple it and uh, he would print and staple it at his own place yeah yeah so so actually in a way you said not like lamentations but if you think uh, about it it started like that so that's Absolutely, how it started. Yeah. So it, it, your point your point is even more valid now when you yeah. consider that yeah yeah i think just don't overthink about production because you, you what you want to do is create a fun adventure and then get it out yeah, the, the players the, the players don't see production and the game masters are looking for good ideas exactly that's it is at the table the production doesn't matter uh only in terms of clarity of use but in terms of if it's got lovely colored fonts and it's got uh, like nice nice end papers or a nice board around the page, that doesn't matter at the table. Yeah. It's irrelevant, you know? Exactly. Um, so, yeah, just make it fun and make it interesting. And that's how you make a successful adventure, he says. I don't know, you know, but that's how I do it. So, Kelvin, by the way, um, we're nearing the end, uh, but the... Um... At the you know somewhere on the beginning i think you you said that you would be flattered if someone went after you in a product like the kids and bikes things or mm. so you know i'm writing something can, can i have like a victim called kelvin yeah yeah no, of course you can yeah absolutely okay. I, I would love that okay um i i i put jokes in in my adventures uh like prodding at people and having a bit of fun at people at okay. expense Nothing, you know, nothing harmful. Just like oh, no, no, know, no way. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking anything this day. So I just mean like, if there is someone who has to be killed by a monster, can I name that person Kelvin? Is that okay? Oh with yeah, you? yeah, I'm absolutely happy with that. That's fine. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's it, it it's all fun. It's just games at the end of the day. You know, and Very well. so so just so everyone knows, no, it's not a threat. I'm, <laughs> it's not a threat. It's a, it's a compliment. <laughs> yeah, if I disappear after this interview. The, the, go after this guy you know that's <laughs> the police go to this guy he's he did it <laughs> right the type the profile the front <laughs> that's it get yeah. your mugshot now yeah exactly um okay i will i will i'll, I'll let you know i'll let you know cool. like I'll, I'll show you and then you can be like yeah that, that's not a good product bruno I'm like i never talk about quality I just say i put you there as a victim 
<laughs> That's fine. <laughs> and um, okay, so let's see. Uh, as we're almost an hour and a half, uh, let me let me ask you: What are you? I mean, I don't know what you consider. Now. Can you talk about your next project, your upcoming project? Can you talk about it a little bit? Uh, I think so. I'm never sure, but I don't think James really cares. Uh, Do you have a non-disclosure uh, agreement on your the stuff you're writing? No secrets at this stage. I don't think okay. uh, he, we'll be okay. Yeah, he usually tells me if I'm not allowed to talk about something, and usually if I'm not allowed to talk about it, it's not something I'm doing. It's something someone else is doing. Well, which, of course, I wouldn't ask you. Yeah. 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 What, what he'll do is he'll send me someone else's book, and he'll say, "Is that you know, what do you think of this? Don't tell anyone that it exists. Um, not that there is anything of that sort. It sounds like a Necronomicon kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's actually got the rights to Fatal, and he's producing the second edition. Uh, <laughs> um you know no, it, it, uh, yeah th those are the kind of jokes that are dangerous i think around someone like james raji <laughs> yeah because he will see this and he'll go huh. hmm, how much are the rights to fatal yeah um, <laughs> and he will do it um i would lose it, would lose it. And, it would be <laughs> fault. and it would be your fault if it happened yeah, it will be my fault. he'll blame me he will have me do the art for it as well and I will have <laughs> Sorry. um uh, it's funny because my... your, your your art is also kind of like has a very um cartoonish style to it. So <laughs> the yeah, style well, with fatal is just hilarious to me. Well, I I did draw um Death Love Doom, uh, which is yeah. probably the most extreme one he's done. Um, uh, yeah, fair uh, enough, fair enough. Now you mention it, and and then uh, forgive us. The cover itself is is pretty uh is pretty uh morbid. So you're, you're, think... right, you're right there. You're you already do that. That's actually part of the appeal. So. Yeah, I think uh, I think you know you could have gone with someone else for Death Love Doom, and it would have been a very different book. But I did it in my style, and that sort of took the edge off what was going on in the pictures. Um, there's uh, there's a there's a um, there's an adversary who can castrate the the player characters just for yes. context for that. Yes, yeah, with big scissors. Yeah. So yes, so there 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 is some uh, there is some stuff in that which. Uh, yeah, it would be very different in a different style, a more realistic style. Yeah. Um, anyway, yes, uh, stuff I'm working on. Uh, I, there's an adventure which uh, I'm writing at the moment. It's only a short one, but uh, um, James has got some big releases out at the end of the year, and uh, he wanted some sort of smaller things to go with it so that there's more to buy. So I'm doing something for that. Um, we're a bit against the clock with it because I lost it all in a computer crash, so I'm rewriting. Um, you know, there's there's a thing called Google Drive. There is a thing called Google Drive, which is where uh, where I'm 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 backing it up now because I didn't uh, and lost it all. Um, so there's that. It's only a short thing. It's um, it's very very silly, uh, as most of my things tend to be. But this is sillier than most. Uh, and uh, it's a heist adventure. Um, oh. So it's all about breaking in, stealing a very specific thing, and then getting out. Um, <clears throat> but it'll be a short, quick thing. Uh, that's hopefully by the end of the year. And then next year, um, how James tends to work is that he will send 40 messages with different ideas in, saying, write this, write this, write this, write this, write this, and then... Maybe four of them will come out. So, uh, but next year, hopefully, there will be a mass battles supplement for Lamentations of the Flame Princess because um, James is very keen to have a, a, a mass battles system attached to the game. Um, so I'm writing that, um, and then. Uh, there will be at least a couple of other adventures out, but uh, those are very early stages. Um, um, they are at the central idea stage that I was talking about earlier. Um, so, the, yeah, the first thing will be this short adventure, and then the next thing, the big next big release, will be this mass battles thing, um, which I'm hunting around for a good title for. So. <coughs> Just, just, just look in the Dungeon Master's Guide first edition for events. Yeah, just yeah, look at the go with Gygax. Whatever he said about mass battles. That's the <laughs> yeah, yeah, there must be. He must have written something in capitals about battles. So yeah, I'll, I'll use that. 
Okay, I'm also again. I'm almost out of battery on this other device, so uh, it forces us to to end it here, uh, <laughs> so we can have a proper conclusion. You see, uh, Kelvin, where can people find you online? Um, well, most of the time, probably the best place to find me is at my blog, uh, which is kelvingreen.blogspot.com. But if you Google search Kelvin Green, you'll find it. Um, I'm not the first mayor of a small town in America, and I'm not a basketball player. Go through those. I'm about fourth or fifth down. Um, that's the best place to find me. I am sort of on X slash Twitter, but that's dying, so I won't be there much longer. That's probably the best place. And I am on Facebook and Instagram. You can find me on there as well. Uh, but kelvingreen.blogspot.com is where I'm going to try and put everything Okay. Um, so you can find me there. Sounds good. Okay. Well, Kelvin, thank you so much for coming to the show. Um, thank you. And, uh, you know, putting up with my weird rants at times and That's actually good. answering the questions that Angry Piper provided. Thank you, Angry Piper, for keeping the thank show. Thank you, Angry back. Piper. Send me some more if you want. Yeah, there you go. There you go, Piper. So now you, you can reach out to Kelvin directly. You don't even need me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Kevin, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thank you.